Okay, so we're going to start off um, talking about section 1.4. Now, um, this section is, um, this is called uh, the tangent and velocity problems. So tangent and velocity problems. Grab another pen. Okay, so it starts off with the following, um, the following question. So suppose that you are somewhere, this is you, and you have an object, um, a ball, whatever, and you're going to throw it down or drop it, so dropped, dropped object. And uh, <clears throat> now it's well known that uh, that the the uh, distance that the, the object has fallen at uh, time distance at uh, time t seconds um, is is given by. So we usually denote it with the letter S. Um, it's given by 4.9 times uh, the time squared, and this is meters. Okay, so so that means that um, wh however long the object has been falling for, you just pl put that value in for t, uh, square it, multiply it by 4.9, and this tells you if you ignore air resistance, this tells you the distance that the object has fallen. Um, so as the object is falling. It's picking up speed, and um, and so we would like to uh, talk a little bit about the speed of the object. Okay, and so the velocity problem is um, is just this. It's the question of how the velocity problem is. Um, how do we make sense of um, what's called the instantaneous velocity. Let's say at a time, uh, at a particular time. We'll pick a particular time in just a minute. Okay. And the way that we make sense of this, um, this word instantaneous, which is the key, the way that we make sense of this is through approximation. An approximation is really the heart of, um, of calculus. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what that means. So what is um, what is velocity? So we can talk for a minute about average velocity. The average velocity, um, let's say from time equals 5 to... Uh, to time equals six. So these are in seconds. So how could you make sense of um, what the average velocity is? Well, this is um, pretty straightforward. All you do is you measure the change in distance, and uh, you divide by the change in time. And so, well, so what does that mean? Okay, so this quantity here, the change in distance, we have a formula for the distance. So this is, you take s of 6 and s of 5, that's the change in the distance. And then the change in time is just 6 minus 5. So this will be in meters, and this will be in seconds. So in the end, your, your uh, units will be meters per second, of course, because it's a velocity that we're talking about. But that represents the average velocity from time equals 5 to time equals 6. And if we'd like, we could compute this. So uh, maybe we better, just for good measure, this is 4.9 times 6 squared minus 4.9 times 5 squared. And we're dividing this all by 1. That's 6 minus 5, I hope. Uh, and if we plug this into our calculator, I have a con calculator conveniently located off screen. So this is 4.9 times 36 minus 4.9 uh, times 25. And this whole thing divided by 1. Okay, so it's 53.9 meters per second. So this was the average the average velocity from time equals 5 to time equals 6 seconds. All right, well, let's take a closer look because 
If we want to talk about the instantaneous velocity, so this is our next question. Question, what is the instantaneous instantaneous I can spell velocity at time t equals 5 seconds. Okay. So what do we mean by that? I mean, what what this really means is if the if the object had a speedometer attached to it, right at the time five seconds, um, the speedometer would be this instantaneous velocity. The readout of the of the speedometer would be the instantaneous velocity. So let's um, the way that we answer this is with approximation. Okay. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let me give away. The entire give away the entire uh, exercise in one sheet here. Okay, so here I've done exactly um, what we've done. I've done um, I've done this is time t equals five to t equals five point one right here. This is um, five to uh, five point oh one. Right here, this is time is 5 to time is 5.001. Right here, and this is time is 5 to time is 5.0001. Right here, okay. And so if we do exactly what we did in the previous example, instead of using 6 here, we use 5.1. Um, and and we calculate this out, we get 49.49, and again, that's in meters per second. Um, same calculation for all of these, so these are all meters per second. And if you look really carefully, what we're actually doing in each of these is we're taking the time that we're interested in, the instantaneous velocity, and we're adding just a tiny little bit of time to that. So in this case, it was 0.1 seconds, and here it's we're adding 0.01 seconds, and here we're adding uh, <clears throat> 0.001 seconds, and so on, okay? So these time intervals are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So in this case, the average velocity uh, becomes a very good approximation for the instantaneous velocity. And I think it's clear that, uh, that what the trend is here, 49.49, 49.049, 49.0049, that last little 49 is just getting pushed all the way. And so this quantity right here, where uh, as, H, as H becomes very small, Um, this quantity is going towards 49. So that's 49 meters per second. And so this is our answer to the instantaneous velocity. So maybe I'll write that down. So therefore, by the way, this is the symbol for therefore. It's a logical symbol. I use it a lot. It makes writing um, a little bit easier. Therefore, uh, the instantaneous velocity at time equals five seconds um, is 49 meters per second. So this is how fast it's going right at uh, that moment. Okay. Now I want to. So that's the velocity problem. I want to take a look at. Uh, at a generalization of this problem. So related is the tangent line problem. Okay, so hopefully you all know what a tangent line is. Um, if you have any sort of geometric figure, there's a geometric figure, just a blob that I drew. If I um, pick a point anywhere on here, uh, the tangent line would be um, a line that uh, touches in exactly one point. So tangent, okay, the tangent line. Uh, we talk about this more generally in terms of uh, the graph of a function. So here's, so here's, uh, for instance, the, uh, the function, the function, I'll try to draw it here. Um, 
y equals uh, x squared. Okay, and so we might look at uh, let's to pick an easy point on here. So here's the point one one. This is on the graph of uh, y equals x squared. Uh, we might try to draw. And do I have some colors here? We might try to draw a line a line that was tangent. tangent at 1, 1 to this, um, to this graph. So how might we compute that? Okay. Well, in fact, the answer is uh, very similar to uh, the answer to the um, velocity problem that we just discussed. So I'm going to I'm going to show you a schematic of this. I'm going to make this quite try to make this quite large here. Okay. So very, very large. And um, let's pretend that uh, let's pretend that this is one and this is one. So you'll ignore the scale of the graph um, at this point. Um, now, so this is y equals um, this is part of y equals x squared. Again, just pretend that it's y equals x squared. And uh, we're interested in finding the tangent line. Well, we don't have um, so let, let me call this uh, function by something. Let's call it f of x. Okay. Pretty imaginative choice, I know. Um, so rather than try to just directly guess what the slope of that line is right there, you might be able to guess and get it right. Um, we're going to actually, I, I want to pick another point on this graph here, and, um, and I want to look at, uh, look at it. And I'm going to draw... The what's called the secant line between those two points. Okay, so this is not the tangent line. This is called the secant line, S-E-C-A-N-T, um, and it's probably not too difficult to convince yourself that if you're kind of close, if this point is kind of close to that point there on the graph, then the secant line is very, very close to the tangent line. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So what are the coordinates here? So there's 1 is the x-coordinate here, and then f of 1 is the y-coordinate. Here, I'm going to write it in a, in a weird way. This might, look, um, this might look suggestive with the h that we had at the bottom of the last slide in the velocity problem example. So what is the coordinate here? It's 1 plus h in the x-coordinate and f of 1 plus h in the y-coordinate, okay? And now, so those are the coordinates of those two points. Now, what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line has, as its, as its run, its run is equal to h because the distance from 1 on the x-axis to 1 plus h is just the distance h. And then this distance right here, the rise, is just the difference of the y-coordinates. So this is f of 1 plus h minus f of 1, right? Because that's the height, f of 1, right there. And the height is f of 1 plus h right there. So that distance will just be the difference of the two y-coordinates. So the slope of the secant is equal to it's the rise over the run. So f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h. Okay. So we could actually calculate this out if we would like to. Um, let's do that. But before we do, I just want to point out, Okay. while you see that, this is the slope of the secant line. Um, I'm going to slide the previous page directly over this so that you can see, so that you can compare. Um, this formula, s of 5 plus h minus s of 5 over h. This was our approximation for the instantaneous velocity in the previous problem. Here we have f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 um, over h. Notice how similar these are. They're exactly the same. Okay. So the velocity problem is really literally finding a tangent line. Um, all right. So how is it finding a tangent line? Well, we made the observation before that if h is very, very small, this point is going to be very, very, very close to this point on the graph. And the closer this point is to this on the graph, the, cl the more 
the secant line will resemble an actual tangent line. So that's what we're going to do. The strategy is then to, to compute the slope of the tangent line is to find out what happens to this when h is very, very small. So let's do that. So remember f was x squared. So if we take f of 1 plus h minus f of 1, this is equal to 1 plus h squared minus 1 squared. Okay, easy enough of a calculation. This is 1 plus 2 times h plus h squared minus 1. So the whole quantity after the 1's cancel is 2 times h plus h squared. And now if we divide this, this by h, this should look familiar to some things we've done in class, then what we get is 2 times h plus uh, h squared divided by h. Now there's a common h everywhere, so this is 2. It cancels um, with one a copy of h there and uh, one of the two copies of h there. And so we get 2 plus h. So this is the slope of the secant. So I want to go back to this picture again. Let's just draw it in here. Here was 1. Here was 1 again. Here is 1 plus h. And we just computed the slope of... We just computed the slope of that line segment. So this is the secant slope right here. It is. 2 plus h. Now, as we let h get smaller and smaller, 1 plus h will go to 1. So 1 plus h goes to 1. As h approaches 0. And, and so this point here will approach that point. And so what happens to this as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller? It gets closer and closer to 2. Okay. So the secant slope approaches 2, and so that's our conclusion. The tangent line to the function x squared at 1, 1 has slope 2. Okay, And in fact, if you compute If you actually were to sit down and compute what the equation of this line would be, then you would get, so this is the point 1, 1, you would compute that this has slope 2. Okay, that's the tangent line. We'll do problems like this in class.